The next one up of our scientists is Ramya Nair. She's a biologist. She works as a PhD student at the Max von Pettenkofer Institute, where she tries to improve the treatment of leukemia. Today, for you, Ramya will present a technique which uses a viral protein to enhance the effectiveness of chemotherapy for treating leukemia. Thank you very much for the nice introduction. As you mentioned, my name is Ramya, and I'm a PhD student at the Max von Pettenkofer Institute. So when I was in high school, biology was my favorite subject. I found human bodies and how they function very interesting and also very, was very amazed by the diseases that caused them. I find actually microbes like bacteria and viruses especially fascinating and also terrifying at the same time because such tiny organisms can cause such massive damage in the human body. But what if I told you that they can also do good, like turning a foe into a friend? Maybe some of us have already heard about good bacteria, like the ones that live in our stomach and our skin that can potentially protect us from the bad guys. But what about viruses? Movies like Contagion, or basically any zombie movie, shows us the grim consequences of a virus outbreak, kind of like the pandemic that we're in right now. But what if I told you that they could also be used for good? Viral proteins are what I'm using in my PhD project. And I'm going to use some viruses to actually help to treat leukemia, which is a kind of blood cancer. I want to tell you more about this along the following three guiding questions. First question, what is leukemia? Second question, how is leukemia treated and what are the challenges of treating them? And third question, how can viruses solve one of these challenges? So let's dive right in into the first question. What is leukemia? Leukemia is a cancer of the blood caused by an out of control growth of certain cells in the blood. You can imagine a leukemic cell to look like this. This is a bad guy. Now for the second question. How is leukemia treated? Leukemia is usually treated using chemotherapeutic drugs. And these drugs work by actually attacking fast growing cells like cancer cells. And here I am actually portraying the chemotherapeutic drug with this Pac-Man. And this Pac-Man drug can actually attack and kill these leukemic cells. In other words, eliminating them. But what are some of the challenges for treatment? Some leukemic cells actually have found a way to protect themselves from getting attacked and eliminated by the chemotherapeutic drug. And you can imagine this protection as this leukemic cell having a coat of red paint on them. This is called drug resistance, and this is a huge problem in the treatment of all kinds of cancers. But how exactly do these cells actually protect themselves? One way they do it is by actually allowing the drug to enter the cells, but then stopping it in its tract and preventing it from causing any further damage. How exactly do they do this, actually? So, these protected leukemic cells actually contain a little protein. Proteins are found in all of our cells. They are like little workers that are responsible for making sure that the cell is functioning properly, kind of like workers in a factory. And this particular protein, as portrayed by the red paint, is what protects these leukemic cells from damage caused by the drug. And this is actually the problem that I'm trying to solve in my research. I want to remove this red paint so that the leukemic cells become vulnerable and can then be eliminated by the drug. So this brings me to the third question. How can viruses help to solve this issue? So luckily, such a tool already exists in nature that we can use to fight this. And this tool is a virus. This virus here is from the same family as HIV. And these viruses contain a very special protein portrayed by this eraser right here, which can actually help to erase the red coat of painting from these leukemic cells, allowing them to be more vulnerable to attack by the drug. But of course, we can't just give this virus to leukemic patients. This virus is still very dangerous. They, this virus, as you can see, contains all of the other components besides the eraser. 
And these components actually contribute to, the to how dangerous this virus is. These components actually allow the virus to infect our cells and make more viruses, causing a lot of damage in our body. So in order to solve this problem, I've, in my work, I'm actually producing a virus that is less dangerous. And I do this by actually removing things in the virus that makes it very dangerous. So it looks then eventually like this. So here, I just simply have the shell of the virus and only the protein, which is what I want to erase the red paint. And in this virus, they're not able to divide inside the cell and produce more viruses, causing no harm to the cells in the body. So with this particular virus, I can then let it enter the leukemic cell. The eraser then in the virus can erase the red coating and these leukemic cells then can become more vulnerable. And when you then later treat them with the chemotherapeutic drug, the drug can then enter the cells and also eliminate the cells. So with this, we can actually treat leukemic cells, especially the ones that are protected. So in conclusion, I hope that I could show you that we could turn a foe, like this virus, which is causing a lot of harm in the body, to a friend, like this virus, which contains a very special protein that can help fight cancer. So, like the old saying goes, never judge a book by its cover. So we should also never judge a virus by its shell, because it could contain some useful tools that could help us in our fight against cancer. Thank you very much for listening. Wow, this is such an interesting approach to treat such a de devastating um, cancer. <laughs> so thank you very much for these insights, Ramya. Now it's time to pester Ramya with your questions on cancer treatment, the ones you always wanted to have answered. For this, simply ask your question in the chat so that I can forward them to Ramya. We already got the first one which is, do you di directly extract the viral protein from the virus or do you produce it in the laboratory? That's a very good question. So actually when I'm just making these virus shells with the protein inside, I don't have to extract the virus. All I have to do is actually genetically modify these viruses to make sure that they are not producing any of these other um, dangerous proteins. So in the end, I am just making the shell of the virus and then just have making sure that the, the genomic sequence, which is actually the blueprint to produce this eraser protein, is then included when I'm also making the shell. In this way, I just have the shell of the virus and just the eraser protein, so without any of the other stuff that makes it dangerous. Okay, so I think this is a follow-up question from Gary Fowler on YouTube. But this new virus with just the eraser, survive inside the body just the same way as the real virus does? So that's actually the beauty of these using viruses because they naturally can survive inside the body because they want to eventually infect the cell. But of course, these are less dangerous because they cannot reproduce in the cell and then make more viruses which can then spread across the body. So they're, they're specially, viruses are specially designed to basically survive in our body. And this is why it's actually quite, quite a nice strategy to use viruses to deliver therapeutics, not only viral proteins, but also other therapeutics. Okay. Abhishek asks on YouTube, from which class does the, to which class does this be virus belong? To which class? <laughs> I don't know. Sorry. I guess you mentioned it belongs to the family um, of HIV yes, viruses. So I assume it's <laughs> going in this direction. Thanks for the clarification. Yes, so I mentioned it is from the same family as HIV. So actually the ones that I'm using are from semen immunodeficiency virus. So HIV is human immunodeficiency virus. And semen immunodeficiency virus are just viruses that infect monkeys, not humans. So... This is the class of virus. So they're all lentiviruses, if you are really interested in the kind of family <laughs> these viruses come from. Okay, then Sakura asked on Facebook, do you see a possible future where cancer would be cured like a cold? Who? <laughs> that is a tough question. Um, 
I mean, cancer is a very complicated disease and it's very different from patient to patient. So it is a very difficult disease to cure and you can't find a one size fit, fits all treatment for cancer. I mean, now we are already seeing a more personalized approach to cancer therapy where people are trying to find for each individual like a personally designed treatment. So I can, hopefully this happens that in the future, cancer patients have a better prognosis and they can get better treatment options based on personalized therapy. But this is, uh, we still need to learn a lot about cancers and they're constantly changing and they're very different. So yeah, it is, a, it is a difficult journey, but I'm confident that we will get there. Would it also be able with your approach to have it as a personalized treatment strategy? It is possible. So they, uh, you can make them, so you can engineer these viruses with um, different kind of spike proteins, like in the coronavirus, so to say. And these can be made in such a way that they target specifically to different cancer cells. So of course, different cancer cells, they are all mutated, so they're all very different. And they contain different surface proteins, so to say. And we can also engineer viruses that they are particularly targeting cancers based on, for example, if a patient has a particular surface protein on them, that these viruses can then specifically attack them. But of course, this is, yeah, a lot of work and it requires a lot of research to go into it. Yeah. Okay, thanks. So another question from Gary Fali on YouTube. Mm -hmm. How far away are we from a clinical application? Um, you mean of, of viral therapies, I guess? I so, think so. Actually, there are already um, four virus, virus therapies in the market that are used. One of them is uh, also FDA approved and also approved for usage in Europe. And uh, these are basically viruses that are um, used for cancer therapy specifically. So for example, the virus therapy that is used, that is approved in, in the US and Europe, um, actually what it does is it specifically enters, uh, it specifically infects tumor cells and only kills the tumor cells. So they have some, some modifications that only allow them to kill the tumor cells, but not the healthy cells. So this has actually been um, used in some cancer treatments. So I think, and there's also a lot of viral therapies that are um, under clinical trials right now. Some of them are already in phase three. So I think pretty soon we might see actually um, a rise in number of viral therapies for cancer. Oh, wow. Yeah. This sounds interesting. Um, Ida asked on Facebook, would this type of treatment have less side effects compared to current cancer treatments, which are known to be rather harsh? Um, that's also a very good question. So this is the hope then that we are trying to achieve that, of course, with viruses, the beauty is that you can engineer them. And some of them are actually also specifically only attacking certain types of cells. So this way you can really engineer them to be very specifically only targeting cancer cells. So this has advantages compared to, for example, chemotherapy, where you have then a lot of side effects because it basically targets every fast growing cell. So I think we can definitely leverage viruses to make them more specific with less side effects. Okay, Mark asked on YouTube, how do you make sure that you're only giving the harmless virus and not the harmful version of, to the patient? Is there a possibility of some kind of quality control? Yes, so when we actually eventually approve a treatment for usage in humans for treatment of cancer, there is a long, long road between actually coming up with the strategy until actually using them for treatment and all of this are put in place to make sure that there are no side effects that, um, that we can observe in patients. So there are preclinical trials where we look at the cells in the lab, and then we also do some animal models to make sure that there are no side effects in the animal models, and also do phase one, phase two. So there are multiple, multiple layers that make sure that what eventually goes into the patients is not harmful. Okay. The next question comes from Facebook, from mm -hmm. Kumal. Are there any potential side effects associated with using viral proteins to improve the chemotherapy? So this is a valid question, actually. It's also something that we also all constantly have to take into account when we are coming up with these strategies. So um, in this case, we are, of course, the viral protein 
has different functions in the body, and we also have to make sure that they are not too detrimental to the cells. So in some cells, you can still give viral therapy, but they still can bounce back from it if it's not too dangerous. But in cancer cells, these are more detrimental than, than in healthy cells. But of course, uh, this we have to do a lot of research and we have to do a lot of tests to make sure that there are no detrimental side effects in healthy cells by using these viral proteins. Okay, the next question is, what would be the patient's reaction to being treated with a viral protein? In your opinion, would they be doubtful or rather scared? <laughs> well, <laughs> that is also <laughs> quite an interesting question, actually. So, I think if I am, if I speak for myself, if I have diagnosed with cancer and it is very devastating and um, if I'm given the opportunity, if I'm told that, okay, they have done clinical trials with this particular viral therapy and it shows improvement in survival. As a cancer patient, I would be like, sure, because I mean, this, this treatment has gone through a lot of testing and it has shown time and time again that it is working better than conventional therapy. I think I would go for it. I mean, we're all doing all the tests to make sure that there are no side effects or there are less side effects than conventional therapy. So I think I, I trust <laughs> the clinical trials that they're going to do a good job. Yeah, I think this is also part of why science is there to exactly. actually make sure that this is safe. Yeah. The next question comes from Becky on Facebook. Is your treatment idea suitable for other cancers or mainly leukemia? Um, so, for example, it's also suitable for other cancers. So, for example, the, the treatments, the ones that are actually already approved for, um, for treatment, they have, for example, for, I think, adenocarcinomas approved and for also pancreatic cancer. So, there are different applications. So, it's not just leukemia. It, they're also for other cancers available. Yeah. Okay, then last question for you. How do people become unresponsive to chemotherapy? Um, so there are many different mechanisms that are involved in a cancer cell becoming unresponsive or like resistant to drugs. And um, for example, one of the methods that I mentioned was that there are some proteins in the cancer cells that can actually prevent the drug from causing harm. There are also some cells that can spit out the drug, so to say, so that the drug cannot be inside the cell and, and kill the cell. Um, but how, as you know, cancer cells, they're constant, they're very mutated, so they're very altered from the regular cells. And this mutation can actually um, alter a lot of these pathways that are making the cell or like kind of trying to prevent the cell from dying. And this is also, some of, them, some of these pathways also interfere with drug-induced death of cancer cells. So there are several mechanisms that cancer cells use to evade being killed by the drugs. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Unfortunately, time is flying by super fast, but thanks one more time for your talk and answering our audience's questions. Thank you and so much. And thank you for asking all of them.